We're with Carlos Tavares in uh, Smyrna, Tennessee, where they're just breaking ground for the new battery plant. Big question, Carlos, is how the demand for electric vehicles is going to ramp up. The Electrification Coalition, of which uh, Nissan is a member, is very optimistic. Where do you come out on that? There's a lot of different uh, projections floating around out there. Yeah, you are right. There are a lot of different numbers, but uh, there are a few that I know uh, quite well, and uh, they are basically two. Uh, so far, we have accumulated 130,000 hand raisers, which means 130,000 people saying, I'm interested and I want to know more about the Nissan Leaf. The second number I know well is the number of people who have made a reservation of Nissan Leaf, paying $99 to reserve uh, this car, and uh, this number is 13,000 uh, so far, uh, and of course still, still increasing. So those are very concrete numbers, and uh, of course we will see later on how many of those reservations will be translated in actual orders, but we are very confident at this stage, and uh, I must say that the speed at which we are ramping up is uh, not only meeting our expectations, but exceeding our expectations. 13,000 reservations is actually beyond your capacity. You won't even be able to meet that? Well, uh, it, it's true that 13,000 reservations for this fiscal year only already exceeds the capacity for fiscal year 10, but certainly not for fiscal year 11. And initially these cars are going to be made in Japan, but in 2012 production uh, ships here to Tennessee? Uh, the production in Tennessee will happen from uh, late 2012. Uh, uh, that's uh, the plan we have with the groundbreaking ceremony today. And uh, you, can, uh, you can then have uh, the sourcing of all the Nissan Leaf in the Americas from Tennessee at that point in time. Would there be any difference between the cars built here and uh, the cars built in Japan? Uh, are the Jap Japanese specs going to be significantly different? Well, th there will be, of course, as, as usual, some fine-tuning in terms of uh, adapting each market. Uh, and it's already the case for the Japanese sourcing with which we are going to start the sales. So you can expect some uh, slight differences. Of course, you have the regulatory differences, which will, which will happen. And, uh, and that's all. Uh, and of course, as you know, we have the Nissan Manufacturing Way, which ensures the highest level of quality from whatever manufacturing site we have in the world. I was recently in Japan, and they're going to be having fast charging at a convenience store uh, chain there. Do you, do you think a lot of uh, a lot of what we're going to see is going to be fast charging? What percentage of charging do you think will be done in like half an hour at very high voltage? Well, you know, I don't think we, we can see yet uh, the speed at which we will expand the number of uh, fast charging units. And the reason is quite simple. is because there is still a lot of work going on uh, to reduce the cost of those stations. And uh, uh, it's, it's quite easy to anticipate that the speed at which those fast charging units is going to expand is going to be higher than what we think because the cost of those charging units is going to decrease sharply in the months ahead. And you won't see, uh, from what we've heard, even if you do fast charging, you're still going to have 70 to 80 percent of battery life after 10 years. Absolutely, absolutely. That's you, you don't see a lot of degradation from fast charging? No more than what you have just mentioned. This is what our guests are telling us today. Okay. Thank you very much, Carlos. You're welcome.